Hi everyone, uh, it's Raven again, and I have my speech pathology hat on today. Um, I wanted to just um, put some therapy ideas out um, for the Valentine's Day holiday. Um, this is how I'm starting my week, and um, I always think some people might like ideas of what they can do, different materials they can use um, in their own therapy settings. So I'm just going to share quickly um, one of the therapy activities that I like to do every Valentine's. Um, I have a great time with it. The kids have a great time with it. Um, it can be used in a variety of different ways, and it's a literacy-based because I do a lot of literacy-based work. So um, these are like preschool, um, early elementary age kids. Some little older, depending on skill level, can do this as well. Um, but I use, I like to use the book, Valentine's Surprise by Corinne Demas and illustrated by R.W. Alley, and I believe the printer is um, Walker and Company. Bloomsbury Kids is where it says to go. Um, so I kind of stumbled upon this book on accident several years ago, and it has become one of my all-time favorite Valentine's Day books. Um, I'm doing it this week leading up to Valentine's Day because it is all about days of the week and sequencing. Um, it's also great for targeting, of course, narrative development, answering questions, um, simple um, grammar forms with like verbs, noun verb um, utterances. Um, also, um, I think I said descriptive concepts. Um, and then um, it has, you can use repetitive language. So it can be very repetitive for kids that need repetitive language books. Um, really, really great um, book. So this, um, in a nutshell, this story is about a little girl who wants to make a Valentine for her mom. Um, so she gets some paper and she cuts, and each day of the week, she cuts another heart for her mom. And uh, it's it's pretty nice. She, um, she always sits at her table by the window. As the week goes by, the weather changes outside the window. So that's kind of an, another little fun detail that you can talk about. Um, and then at the end, you know, she doesn't like any of your, any of her hearts. They don't turn out the way she wanted them to. She doesn't think that they're perfect. So she puts them under her bed. And at the end of the week, she um, tapes them all together and presents them all to her mom. So with this book, um, I often, I have, um, I made the hearts. Each heart has a different descriptor. So one's too bumpy, one's too round, one's too skinny. Um, so you have nice um, adjective um, linguistic concepts that you can target there. And um, I, so I have this. So sometimes as we read the book, I will have the kids identify, can you find the skinny heart? Can you find the square heart? And then they can color it. Um, at the end of the session, we cut them out, we tape them together, and they have a Valentine to take home to their family member or to keep for themselves. Um, so that's one way I do this. Another way is I actually have the hearts colored and cut out. Um, so I will lay these out on the table. And as we go through the book, I will have the kids identify the heart that the girl made. And then we line them up left to right sequential order. And then at the end of the book, they can help tell the story using the hearts as manipulatives. Um, and sometimes I'll even lay those hearts on like a big desk calendar on each day to help understand day of the week concepts too. Um, so those are some of the ways that I like to use this book particularly. I also have um, this with all the hearts taped together like she presents to her mom. So I'll hang this up on the wall so they can, uh, if the kids need it as a reference, if the kids need it as a reference as they're sequencing, um, if they want to see if they put them in order right, we can check it this way. So um, I really, really, really enjoy this book um, for so many reasons. Um, for um, kids that are working on sentence forms, I say, what is she doing? She is cutting or the girl is cutting or cutting or whatever level they're at. They can answer the simple question repetitively. Um, I, you know, for some kids that are working on narratives or being able to tell a story, but they can read. I have a couple of um, kids that can read, but they're, they're very impaired when it comes to expressive language. So I made a little on, and then they fill in the day of the week, and Lily is the girl's name. 
made a and what kind of heart she made. They put the descriptor. So they just changed the day of the week and the descriptor. Um, and that can kind of help them tell the story as well. So that's just a simple idea. Um, it can take a 30 minute session depending on the kid and how many things I'm working on and what I'm working on and what I'm targeting. Um, sometimes we read the book first and then we do the activity and we see if we can remember or we reference the book. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can do it. But again, it's become one of my very favorite Valentine's Day books because it, there's just so many different ways that you can use it depending on the needs of the kids. So this is a book I highly recommend for your Valentine's Day theme. And if you would like, I do think I have the hearts that I free drew <laughs> and I'm not an artist, but I free drew these hearts and I think I might have them on a file. So um, if you would like a copy of the hearts, I think I could probably email them to you. So anyway, happy Valentine's Day almost. And I will see you all later and have a great therapy day.